So I'm now joined by Chris Smalls, a former Amazon employee and founder of the Congress for Ess of Essential Workers. He joins me now from Seattle. Tell me more about the protests that you have been busy organizing and what you and your, your colleagues are calling for. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we've been protesting ever since, uh, uh, we are saying May 1st was our first demonstration together collectively. And together we've been traveling the country, uh, protesting in front of Jeff Bezos' residence. We started off in New York City at his $80 million mansion. We went down to Washington, D.C. at his $23 million mansion. Then we went out to Beverly Hills at his $165 million mansion. Now we're out here in Seattle, Washington. And the things we're advocating for is a wealth tax, uh, a PPE to be provided by the company, the $2 hazard pay that they took away back in June, and the unlimited paid time off options, as well as Medicare and child care, and a number of different demands that these workers deserve, rightfully so, in the midst of this pandemic. You allude there to the, the vast personal wealth of, of Chief Executive Jeff Bezos, who's, who, well, he's already the world's richest man, but actually because of Amazon's success during the course of the COVID-19 pandemic has become even wealthier. Now, obviously, well, Black Friday uh, has happened in many places, but... Uh, beyond Black Friday, how can what do you call for people to do, consumers? Stand in solidarity with the essential workers. You know, essential workers are Amazon employees, and um, uh, the company failed to protect us. So if you stand in solidarity with essential workers, we're asking to boycott these companies, cancel your Prime membership, um, stop ordering from Amazon until they do better by their employees. We are the warehouse workers that are out here getting sick. Uh, workers that have died in my same facility that I started advocating in in the very beginning. They failed to protect us, and thousands of employees worldwide have contracted this virus. And many are out here suffering still. So we're asking for consumers to stand in solidarity with essential workers and boycott the company. Yeah, and how important is it then for you that the citizens and uh, people out there do their bit? Because really, when you look at multi million, billion dollar corporations, trillion dollar uh, corporations like Amazon, they're really too large and sprawling for uh, trade unions or, or governments to necessarily control. Absolutely. And that's the problem that we have here in the United States. This company is a monopoly. It continues to grow and control the market, control the narrative, control the propaganda that's out there. They have way too much power. They do a, a, they hire all the surveillance. They do union busting tactics. They fire in employees like myself that speak up on things that are very uh, important. And this is what they do. This is what they're known for. And they only get a slap it on, on the wrist. So it's a time now that we're in that we need to fight back. So this is what we're out here trying to do. We're trying to speak up and fight back and get some of that power back. I mean, Amazon says that they have a, a very good track record in supporting their employees and, and customers and communities and, and providing safe working conditions, competitive wages, they say, and great benefits. As someone that obviously used to work for the company, what's what's your response to that? No, you know, it, it's absolutely a uh, false narrative, and it's not the reality of the situation. You know, you have workers that work for this company um, that, that has been sleeping out of their cars. There's workers that's out here surviving check to check. There's workers out here being forced on extensive medical leaves, um, and it's, they're not even being taken care of. You know, the company has failed to take care of their, their medical needs, failed to listen to uh, the employees' demands, and failed to listen to the employees uh, speaking up. And, and they control the narrative to the point where the consum consumers don't see these stories and don't hear about it. So if we don't continue these demonstrations, they will never know the truth. And so that's what we have to do. We have to continue to speak our truth tell the stories and speak up for the voices that are unheard, that are still working for this company. And hopefully one day um, we'll get to a point where we'll be able to organize and unionize and be protected as workers. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. Chris Smalls joining us there from Seattle.